I'm Caroline at For the Love of Crochet, and today is a hooking up with books episode. Uh, so this is like a yarny book club, crochet book club, and this is the big reveal video for any of you who have clicked on this video. We have just finished reading The Marsh King's Daughter by Karen Dion. It's right here. Great book. Part of a great book, I feel, gives emotions, draws emotions out of you and this one did. There was lots of likes for this book, but there was also some strong feelings about um, maybe this probably wasn't the book for them. And then there was other parts of this story where they really liked the story, but had a hard time reading certain parts. So um, I don't think I'm gonna give too much away, but you never know. So be prepared for spoilers or not. So this was a book that I picked and I really like it. However, I think this is this was my second time reading it and it struck a different chord with me and I like a book that can do that um, where you can reread it and get completely different emotions out of it depending on where you are in life. And, and so certain parts of this story was really hard to read and or disturbing. But when I first read it, it was, it didn't strike a chord with me. So anyway, okay, so what I made is, I made a bear. Now, a bear is in this um, book. She's a hunter. So I made a bear. It's a viewer that inspired me. Um, some, some of you have watched, I've gotten a lot of new subscribers, and some of you are commenting on old videos and one of the videos was from this bear I made and let's just say I am never making this pattern again. <laughs> so here he is. This is the way that he looks in his um, photo on Etsy. But this is an old pattern I did and if you guys are new uh, you, or if you guys are not new, you may have seen him, remember him. <laughs> now this one, I just thought, you know what? I made a lot of mistakes on this pattern. Because this pattern is written much differently, much differently than patterns that I'm used to, it, um, the legs are This designer tries to make this a no-sew pattern, basically. And <laughs> it just, it just, it's, I thought this was like, okay, I made a lot of mistakes on the first one. I was like, okay, maybe I made a mistake on the yarn. <laughs> but now I've done it twice. So this one looked like a rat, and so I called him my rat bear. And you know, I used this furry yarn, and then this one, I was like, okay, I'm gonna cuten this guy up. I didn't give him a gray nose, I gave him a darker brown, and some felt eyes that I purchased off Etsy. And so, <laughs> I used different yarn, and a yarn that wasn't as furry as this one, and chunky. Now, I still do not like this pattern, and it had to grow on me and you have to not overstuff it like at all like I put too much stuffing and so he's supposed to be like like that <laughs> there's his back there he has no tail I don't think and he's meant to sit so I made the bear. I do think it's an improvement off the first bear, but I will never make this pattern again. <laughs> it's just not my style, not what I was liking, but apparently I liked it at one point. Um, just not a style I want. There's what he looks like without. Um, I just, I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> He is even using yarn that I love because I'm like, I want to like this pattern. So I even used yarn that I really love. Did not help. Um, and I did overstuff it just a bit. 
I mean, he's a cute rag doll. Um, if you're going for that style, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'll ever make this again. So that is my project and it was try to redeem myself from this one because I had chose different yarn. She also does something like a, a chain one to change colors and I d just, that, that just messes me up. So I just thought I was making a lot of mistakes, but apparently he looks exactly the same, just in different yarn. <laughs> so I will never make that again. I will leave the link to the pattern, but I will not make it again. Okay, so now to share all the makes that subscribers have participated in who have read the book or wanted to participate and didn't even read the book. Okay, and first up we have Diane Riley. Now she made um, this project based on Helena's mother who tried to make her a doll and she used coal for eyes and sticks for fingers and an um, old onesie that she had to try and make a doll for Helena. Because um, again, they live in the remote woodsy area where there's nobody around. And so she had no idea what it was. Anyway, so she made the doll to represent that. And thank you for participating, Diane. Now, she is one who said she enjoyed the story very much, but there was certain parts she just couldn't read. <laughs> this pattern is based on a free pattern on Ravelry. Thank you for participating, Diane. Next up, we have Jana Kay. Now, I love where she took this as well. Uh, Jana Kay absolutely loved this story and she has her own video on it and why she chose what she chose and what she connected with and she highly recommends it and she has her own youtube channel called flourish faith and fiber now she made a frog because tied in with this story is the hans christian anderson um fairy tale the marsh king's daughter and so she she made the toad and i just love that she made that and that connection that she made i really love the pattern too she didn't share it but that's okay i really really enjoyed that she enjoyed it so much and she made this frog so cute frog toad whatever it is <laughs> and then she put a crown on it because it's the Marsh King's daughter. So this is the Marsh King. Okay, next up we have Robin, who's also a regular participant in hooking up with books. And she was inspired by Helena's jelly making side business that she does. And she was inspired by Helena's cattail jelly that she had learned to make from her mother and how nobody can guess what this secret ingredient is and alone it probably would not be good but because she mixes it with blueberry cattail blueberry jelly she made these jelly jar covers that are so adorable and that is a good way to use up yarn and gifting i really love using jars and crochet and i have my own video i'll link it down below because it's so so cute and takes no time or effort and it's nice and quick gift and i love the little tassels she used as a little string i love that that is something um, i'm glad you shared this because this is so cute so i'm very glad you participated robin and love the way that you took this as well what how you were inspired next up we have Pamela at Ginger Cat Crochet and she made this cute little gnome. Now she is a humanitarian. Hmm. Now she is someone who loves animals to her core and supports animals and she says I can't read this book but I still want to participate. So I thank you so much, Pamela, for participating and supporting Hooking Up With Books. So she just used the cover of the book and made this gnome. It's so cute. She does have her own video on this as well, so I'll link that down below. Thanks, Pamela. Next up, we have Amy from Hooked on Wishing Crochet. Thank you so much for participating. Um, I'm not sure if this was your first time, 
but she was inspired by Helena's relationship with her own two young daughters and how it reminded her of the relationship that she has with her sister. And Helena names her daughters in the novel after her mother's favorite flowers. And so she was inspired to make this beautiful little flower angel doll. So, so pretty, love the colors. And it's a marigold fairy. And I believe one of the daughters is called Mary Marigold. And she also plans on gifting this to her sister. So she really tied it in well. Um, I really love that. And this doll is so, so pretty. She said this was adopt adapted from a YouTube tutorial. I'll try to find it and link it. Uh, um, she did adapt it a little. Oh, thank you so much for participating, Amy. And thank you for bringing that um that connection because I come I didn't even connect that she named her daughters after flowers so I'm glad she brought that up next up we have Jacqueline thank you so much for participating and she said she loved the book and she loved the movie so these are both um, available I'll try to link them down below as well but she was inspired by the Hans Christian Andersen part of the novel as well and so she made this ogre and it's kind of a cute ogre, but I love the color changes and the overalls. It's so cute. And then dogs play a very important role in this novel. And I love how, um, this is, this, if you don't like, if you don't like the stories where the dog mm, doesn't make it, you may want to skip one of these parts. <laughs> This is probably a part a lot of people skipped, but she made a puppy and I'm so glad she represented the puppies in this book. Um, there's two main dogs in this novel, so she made this cute little dog and I have to say I absolutely love it. I love his big old paws, his big old, reminds me of those when you get a big dog that's a puppy and they're just absolutely clumsy and pounce all over the place and paw you. That's what this puppy reminds me of. It's absolutely adorable. I love this pattern. Okay, next up we have Simona who's participating all the way from Europe. Thank you so much for always participating. Um, she made a horse and I can't believe she made this pattern. She said she used a two millimeter. Oh, you put in work for this pattern. I am so sorry you used a two millimeter. That must be some super tiny yarn. Um, she also said she felt like she overstuffed it. I think if you have any thicker yarn, you'll have an easier time. <laughs> but I love your horse. Ugh, the horses are so hard and I like the true representation that it is. Even the back hind legs, like, ooh, I, yes, I get you. I love the amount of yarn you used on both the mane and the horsetail. It's so cute. I'm so glad you took extra pictures too. So thank you so much for participating, Simona. I am so sorry you had to use a two millimeter. Yeah, I don't think I go beyond a three. Sometimes a 2.5, but a two, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think that is everybody. If I forgot any of you, I am so sorry. It is not on purpose and it is just my bad brain. <laughs> I am so sorry if I missed you, but if I did, please let me know and I'll try to recover it. So thank you so much for participating. Our next book is going to be... So our next read starting now up until September 15th, we will be reading All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Dewar. Dewar. Um, it's a historical fiction novel, and I believe this is a movie, um, either a movie or a little mini series on Netflix or Hulu. I will try to link that one down below as well. I do hope you join in, and like I said, even if you don't want to read the book, and you just watch the movie, whatever inspiration you get, this is just a community where we can share the love of reading or watching a movie and our crafty goodies. So feel free to participate. I look forward to seeing what you all come up with. And until next time, bye. What I made is, oh, and I had quite a few entries and you don't even have to watch it. 
more than likely there's a movie or you could use the colors or the cover to make something. So it's really, really, you know, you're not getting a grade. <laughs> it's for community and sharing the love of reading and crochet. 